Hello Facebook, hello everyone watching on Facebook and Instagram. You're very welcome to the Little Cinema live stream. Uh, my name is Kenny Gotten, one of the founders of Little Cinema and uh, this is our fourth live stream. Uh, so you're very welcome to the live stream. We're going to be screening uh, 14 films tonight, all made by filmmakers during the lockdown period. And uh, so if you want to get involved with the comments section and uh, write comments or get involved in uh, your thoughts on the films, that kind of stuff, then please do get involved. We're going to have someone here to read through the comments for us. So this time uh, we have someone uh, actually with us uh, in person in the room. So please welcome to join me today, Matthew Blaney. <laughs> Hey everyone, <laughs> how's it going? How are you Kenny? You're going shy all of a sudden, what's I happening? Am. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hello everyone, how, how are you Kenny? Um, so Matthew will be reading out your comments and uh, we'll be having a bit of banter, having a bit of fun throughout the night. So uh, please do get involved in the comments and uh, last few times it's been a great fun. So uh, do get involved with that type of stuff. Um, There's a nice haircut comment, uh, I'm not sure who's referring well, to. Well it's, it's got to be you, Matt, you, you got the and, newest uh, haircut. And uh, loving the new setup from Sarah. And rock and rolling in Doolan, Dermot Petty. Dermot Petty, excellent. Matthew, he's mad for the comments already. Fair play, Matthew, well done. <laughs> uh, so we're going to be showing the films. Uh, we'll also have filmmakers introduce the films for us. Um, and so some of them will be pre-recorded messages, some of them will be live with us on Zoom. Uh, and so there'll be a mixture throughout the night of, uh, of filmmakers in introducing the films. Um, just want to give a huge thank you, first of all, to everyone who's helped make this happen. So that's uh, Adrian Conway, uh, Ray Grady, uh, Dahi O'Malley, uh, Finta Gerzi, um, we got Matthew Blaney, also the Gall Film Centre, uh, Alan Duggan and Owen, Owen Butler Thornton up there. Thank you all very much for making it happen. And of course to uh, James Harold in the Gall City uh, for the funding uh, which um, uh, has kept the Little Cinema going for the last few years. Um, and uh, so thank you to everyone who has helped make this happen. Um, I think there's not much more to go through at the moment, uh, but we better start with a few films. What do you reckon? Yeah. Film? Yeah. Uh, okay, so uh, first film, uh, it, no one likes to go first in shows for whatever reason, so I put myself up as a sacrificial lamb to go first. So this is a, an, an idea which I had um, where it's like a setting in a, in a wedding and uh, someone starts shushing and then they get shushed by someone else and it kind of creates kind of a, a avalanche of shushes. Um, and so I filmed this by myself uh, in, in, uh, in the house with uh, one camera done in two different takes. And I had many moments where I questioned what the hell was I doing, uh, but I got through it. So I, in this, I am sitting beside my girlfriend in this, uh, my very much imaginary girlfriend, and uh, she's the person I'm talking to in this. Uh, so this is called uh, Shush, Shh, Shh, and uh, enjoy. Thank you very much. There's someone singing. Just keep your mouth shut. Are you shushing me? Or are you shushing them? You're shushing me. I was shushing them because they were talking. So why don't you keep your shushes to yourself, if you don't mind? Can you believe that? Shh. You did not just shush me. I shushed you because you started talking initially. You saw us all this. 
you cause this bloody snowball of shushes. So it's chaos now, guys. Shh. Quit with the shushin. Shh. Hello everyone, I think we're back in the room, we're back in the room, yeah, we are back in the room. <laughs> uh, so, shh, hopefully, hopefully you all enjoyed that. Uh, that's something which I made and had a few nervous breakdowns while making. Uh, but, uh, yeah, so uh, it's something I'd like to make maybe again with actual people in it rather than just me talking to, uh, talking to the wall. Uh, but, uh, Matthew, I think we might have a few comments there. Do you have a few comments to read out? Yeah, yeah, there, well, there's loads of uh, good feedback, obviously, and uh, uh, JVP, John was urging you as you're introducing it, told, told you to shush and start the film already. <laughs> uh, Kenny shouldn't wear his LC uh, hoodie when painting, well observed by uh, Max. Max Webb. Yeah. yeah. And uh, Liverpool FC champions, Patrick. Well, it has Kelly. to be said, yeah. I'm a yeah. big Liverpool fan, but I didn't want to be rubbing in people's noses, but yeah, yeah very yeah. nice. And, and lots more just uh, laughing emojis and lots of shushes. And uh, Michael said he was loving this. And uh, yeah, just great feedback. Have yeah, we found out whose haircut they were complimenting? I assume it's yours because yours is fresh. Um, no. We, we, we can, if, if you know who's, who's uh, who, whoever you're, I'm sure it's Matthews. Matthews got a lovely hair. He got know. a cut yesterday. I did it himself? Yeah, <laughs> I did it, yeah. Um, I walked out halfway through. I got bored. <laughs> yeah. um, so for everyone who is watching, thank you very much for watching, for tuning in. Um, if you would like to uh, contribute to the cinema or to help make this happen or to um, maybe see this as a, as a like admission fee for Little Cinema, you can um, donate something to Little Cinema as small, as small as you want, like a five euros or whatever if you want. Um, the PayPal link is paypal.me forward slash little cinema. Um, Matthew will be putting that into the into the, the section in a while if you want in the comment section. There's no pressure on anyone, but if you do feel like uh, contributing to this, uh, uh, everything is appreciated and um, it's it'll help to give the boys something. We've got four lads here working uh, feverishly to keep the stream going and they've been working for hours all day today to get the set up. So it's just a way to thank them for all their work and making this happen. So I think it's time to go to the, the first um, live Zoom uh, people to talk to us. That's okay. So we're going to go now to uh, down in County Clare, I think. And we got uh, Derby, Petty and Joan. Are you there, guys? Hey. Hello. Hello. How are you? Hello, Galway. The votes are into the Eurovision. Um, what you call, thanks for having us and showing our film. And uh, just quick introductions here, Shadow the Cat. Rosie the dog. Here is the camera person extraordinaire, Jonah Hammer, and then also AKA Nicola Dopinov. She's the doctor in this very heart rendering documentary about Shadow the Cat, who wants to be the first cat ever to participate for Ireland in the Olympics. And I hope he enjoys this video. Thank you very, very much. Chad, you want to say hello? No? Chad, was talking back. Oh, Sorry, there's a jam. That's it. And Excellent. Yeah. Very good. Thank you very much. Guys, thank you, thank, you, thank you very much for making it. And well done, shout out, well done. You stole the show. Well done. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. They, they, they love your show. They watch the live stream every week. Oh, do they? Every <laughs> week? <laughs> Brilliant. Okay, guys, thank you very much. Great, guys. Thank you very much. Thank you. Brilliant. Thank you. From a man in Kilfenora. These are his papers. And he's from a long line of fast Doolan cats. And this cat could win the gold in the Olympics or the Grand National. He's stubborn. He's from a proud, proud feline line. 
have I seen much of the skill supposedly on these papers? Not at all. If if he thought Rosie here could do a shit for him, he'd let him do it. He's that lazy. Sometimes he doesn't want to do what you want him to do. The Olympics being cancelled was very disappointing. Rosie's been trying to catch Shadow for the longest time and hasn't done it. Shadow has beaten hairs when he moves. It's like chariots of cats. The glory, the majesty. Dermot Pitty and Joan and Shadow the Cat introducing that. Thank you very much, Dermot, for making the film and for sending it on to us. Uh, we are going to go on to our uh, next film now, which is uh, a kind of a pre recorded uh, introduction. And it's John McLean from the guys at Hedgehog Shorts introducing it. So, John McLean, take it away. Thank you. Hey, Google Cinema. Hope you're all having a great night. Um, this is our new short called Sons Out Guns Out made by the Hedgehog Shorts gang. Um, so enjoy. Let's uh, have a great time. Do you mind if I use this machine? I'll only be two minutes. What about the social distancing? <sighs> Don't worry about that, man. Let me just bang out a couple of, a couple of reps here, yeah? I'm very sick. Hello everyone, welcome back to Little Cinema Livestream. Um, that was uh, John McLean there introducing HR Shorts, extra short, very, very funny. Um, and we're going to go to our comments correspondent, Matthew Blaney. Matthew, where have you got? Actually, before we do, we have to show off this little mug here, which uh, our glass, which Ray, Grader's, which Ray Grady gave us. <laughs> and we got um, Jelly Babies in it, which as people who go to Little Cinema in person will know. Do you want to? Yeah, sure, yeah. yeah. For Absolutely. tradition. Absolutely. I have a jelly baby. So what comments have you got there? Um, so to clarify the hair, haircut uh, comment, I think Barry Fahey uh, says, looking very Peaky Blinders, Matthew. So It's got to be you, so. It has to be. He's, he's uh, right. You look very Peaky Blinders. Yeah. Uh, uh, and uh, welcome Paddy Murphy, who joined late. Uh, Osasu loved um, the cat on the shoulder. Lots of love for the cat film. Um, loving the music, says Susan. 
the slow motion, uh, very dramatic, says Eva. Uh, just lots of, uh, yeah, lots of cute, adorable, and I agree, yeah, very cute. Cool, excellent. Uh, we will come back to you after the next film, maybe get some more comments. And uh, in the meantime, we're going to go to our next filmmaker who is joining us live uh, through Zoom. So, uh, Ty Devery, are you there? How's it going, Kenny? I'm very good. How are you keeping? I'm sure I'm all right. Can't complain. <laughs> Um, so, uh, how have you been keeping yourself busy with the uh, lockdown? Oh, lots of sketches, as you probably know. Yeah. Um, just random sketches, and I've started a series as well. I've got 10 episodes of a series shot. Just with using my phone, so that's, that's what's keeping me busy. Well, the, the, the image from the camera is brilliant. It's a really good camera. Yeah, it's not bad, yeah, but yeah, it does the job. And so tell us about the uh, the sketch we're going to screen tonight. Uh, the sketch, well, as I said, I was messing around with random sketches and I created this character, Seamus the Plumber. Yeah. And the first, the first sketch that I put up of him, you know, it went, it went, the ratings, the views went through the roof. And uh, so I said I'd keep making videos with him. And... Uh, so the one you're watching tonight is probably the first time I tested out talking to a celebrity. Um, yeah, in one of the sketches. Yeah, it works. There's lots, it works there's so lots well. more celebrity phone calls. But what? You work so well. You, you you did a great job with the editors and like the uh, the lines that feed into each other. It's brilliant. Yeah, the way I was doing it is I had to write around whatever dialogue I was able to download. You know, so I had to course, write yeah. a, a story around that. So. Yeah. <laughs> That's how Excellent. it happened. So give us the the name of this. Uh, it's basically Seamus the plumber gives Liam Neeson a follow-up call. <laughs> <laughs> and um, uh, where can people follow you? Uh, where can they, they watch your uh, the videos that you've done, the stories that, you, that you've done, the sketches? Um, all of them are on Facebook, uh, Tig J. Debry, Instagram, Tiger Debry, and YouTube is Tig Debry Actor, I think. Some of the videos are on YouTube, but um, working on getting the rest of them up there. Great, excellent. Well, this is fantastic. I think it's hilarious. Ty, thank you very much for getting involved today and for uh, making the video, sending it to us. And uh, everyone watching, enjoy. Ty, thank you very much. Jesus Christ. What are the eating in this place? Can I ring the set? How's it going there, Liam? Seamus Birmingham here. I unblocked all the old shite out of your toilet there last week. I was just doing a follow-up call to see how things were. I don't know who you are. What do you mean you don't know who it is, sir? I just told you. I don't know what you want. I don't want anything, Liam. I'm just ringing to see... Is the toilet still working all right, or what's going on? If you are looking for ransom, I can tell you I don't have money. Ransom? Liam, what in the name of Jess are you talking about? She already paid me. You don't remember me? Of course I remember you. We spoke on the phone two days ago. I don't remember that now, Liam, but... I told you I would find you. Liam, are you all right? Like, what are you talking about? Look, I know there was an awful lot of fumes off that shite, but Jesus, I didn't think it was this bad. I, I just, is, are you having any problems with your toilet since is all I want to know. They do have. Are a very particular set of skills. Skills I've acquired over a very long career. Skills that make me a nightmare for people like you. Huh? I asked you had you any other skills apart from acting and you said no. Were you telling me lies? Because I was not going to let my daughter live with someone without knowing everything about them. I was never with your daughter, Lee. She was trying to get, she was helping me trying to get the holes into the hole of the manhole. And that was it. If you let my daughter go now, that'll be the end of it. I will not look for you. I will not pursue you. But sure, I don't have her, Lee. Is she gone missing or what? I'm not comfortable putting my daughter at risk. At risk of what? You're trying to unblock shite? <laughs> sure, there's no harm in a woman getting her hands dirty. I think that's hard, sexy. 
I will tear down the Eiffel Tower if I have to. Jesus, calm down, man. There's only a mess. Now, the next part is very important. They are going to take you. Who, who's taking me? There's no one taking me, Lee Money Bridget, now in about half an hour when these spuds are bailed. <laughs> I will look for you. No bother, Liam. Look, you know where I live. Call in for tea and a biscuit any time. I will find That's you. That's grand. And I will kill you. Ha! Jesus, Liam, there's no need for that. Hello? Last time I'll unblock that bollocks of style, anyway. Excellent. That was uh, Ty Devy there with that. I think it's a uh, really funny, excellent short. Uh, there's going to be lots of comments about that, I'm sure. Uh, let's, before we go on to more films, let's go over to our comments correspondent, Matthew Blaney. Hi, Kenny. How are you? <laughs> Very good, Matthew. How are you? <laughs> good, good. Uh, yeah, so uh, the Hedgehog shorts, uh, Sun's Out, Gun's Out, uh, just great feedback, loads of clap emojis, laughing. Uh, Barry Fahey, uh, absolutely hilarious. That was majestic, says Vashon. Uh, amazing job, Sarah uh, Barbosa, So Gas, Clara Hearn. Uh, great job, Hedgehogs, uh, Sir Andrew, and yeah, just all around um, great. Uh, mm. It was buzzing. very funny. The comments, are, yeah, very funny, and yeah. the comments are buzzing. Uh, yeah, so over to you, Kenny. And um, uh, what did uh, Xavier Cardiff said? Um... Z yeah, he they, well, he actually posed two questions. Uh, he, <laughs> Xavier wants to know. Matt said. Matthew's also wearing the uh, LC jumper. Who wears it better? Which is uh, well, that's up to the public to decide. That that's is, not, that's yeah. not for us to decide. But, yeah, exactly. Uh, and then his other question was: uh, Is Matthew right? Is Matthew's uh, notepad an iPad? Is is it a live iPad? A live iPad. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, is it? I yeah. I don't know. We're, we're getting to the. We'll did, have to ask. Yeah. Uh, I'll get our tech guys to figure it yeah. out for us. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, Google, let's see if it's a live iPad or what, what yeah, is it? Yeah, I'll check Google. Um, yeah, will you check up on that, yeah? Yeah. Right. Uh, great. Um, and uh, just to let everyone know, if you do want to like uh, contribute, contribute towards Little Cinema, um, our PayPal link is uh, paypal.me forward slash Little Cinema, which is showing up right here. Should I? <laughs> and, um, uh, yeah, uh, anything that you give there is very much appreciated, and, uh, but there's no pressure on anyone to be given it, but if you do want to, it's all appreciated. Um, and so we're going to go to um, next uh, film, which is a very funny sketch also, which has been uh, made by Michael John Byrne, and Michael John has got a, a, a pre-recorded introduction for us, um, and so we're going to go uh, to Michael now to introduce his film. So Michael, take it away. Hi, uh, my name is Michael John Byrne and this is my sketch, uh, Pangolin Secrets Revealed. Um, it's about um, the pangolin, which is supposed to be potentially the cause of the COVID-19 virus. They're kind of like scaly aardvarks and they were potentially the cause of it. So um, I just got thinking about like, what if they had, they got wind of the fact that they were responsible for it and um, that they may be responsible so they had an, emer an emergency meeting. And um, this is about this kind of a secret facility that is after getting their hands on an audio of that meeting at the Pangolin High Council. I uh, hope you enjoy. Thanks very much. Welcome to the Blue Door Lockdown Sessions. Hi, hi, hi. My name is um, Dexter Ferguson. Look, I, I don't like giving my real name out. But I'm after giving it to you now anyway, so look, we'll just, we'll just continue on. Now, I am after getting my hands on some very serious information. Some very, very sensitive information. Now, I am here in a secret research facility in, um, in, in an Alp. Now, what I want to talk to you about is the pangolin. Now, for those of you who don't know, the pangolin is the scaly mammal that's been linked with the, as the cause of the COVID-19 virus. Now, more on that in a second. Contrary to popular belief, the pangolin is not a cross between a penguin and a pan. No, no. It's actually much more close to a cross between an ard and a bark. Now, today I got my hands on this. 
Now, it's an audio. Now, you, you can't see audio, so I'm just trying to get your ears in the right frame of mind to, to listen to it. Now, the, the device we'll actually listen to it on is, uh, is this. Actually, no, it's not that either. It's, it's, it's this. Okay, but what's on it? This, my friends, is a secret meeting held at the Pangolin High Council. Listen to this if you can. And I'll be with you in a couple of seconds. Okay, a couple of minutes. Just listen to this. Order, order. Welcome to this emergency meeting of the Pangolin High Council. I assume we all know why we're here? Yes, it's, 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 it's got to do with the, the human pandemic, isn't it? Humans? Which ones are they again? You know the ones that have made us an endangered species. Many of them have eaten us and ripping our scales to shreds. Oh, those ones. Oh, God. I really hope they'll be okay. What was that, Dennis? Uh, yeah. Look, the latest evidence suggests that we may be responsible for this outbreak. Us? You mean not bats? No, well, possibly bats too, but our job is to make sure that this is laid firmly at the bat store. Tell me. Well, surely it is the bats. I mean, those lads are riddled with disease. Are they birds? Are they mammals? They really want to make up their bloody minds. Some say they're the worst of boot, the weasel of the sky, and the bastard of the mammals. Well, compared to them, we're brilliant. We're known for being shy, placid, and solitary, and for not being aardvarks. Who are they going to believe? Us are flickly flying weasels. Well, how do we prove our innocence? Hmm. What if, um, what if we, we just don't bother? What do you mean? Do nothing. If they believe we carry a deadly virus, are they going to go near us? No. They'll leave us alone. That means no more killing, no more skinning, no more pangolin on the endangered species list. My God. It's, it's, it's so crazy. It might just work. All those in favour of doing absolutely nothing say aye. Aye. Tony? Aye. Roger? Oi. Dennis? <laughs> so it's decided. Do absolutely nothing. There you have it. Quite an interesting listen, I think you'll agree. Now, I really must go as um, I have no very good authority that uh, my voice has been tapped. So I'm going to pack up here and I'll talk to you soon from another app. Excellent. That was uh, Michael John Burdo with that. That was very funny. Well done, Michael. Thank you very much. Uh, he's been involved in uh, three of the four Little Cinema live streams so far. So, Michael, thank you very much for getting involved in it. Um, we're going to go to our comments correspondent quickly for a few comments. Uh, Matthew, what have you got? Uh, so, yeah, lots of uh, love again for Seamus the Plumber. Say, thank you very much. Uh, sorry? Try to say thank you very much. Say it again. Okay. Just thank you very much. Oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Because it, it, it's funny you should mention that because Xavier is uh, watching from Brooklyn right now and he and his friends are taking a shot every time Kenny says... Oh, thank you very much. What? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, no, so... I want them to be sober for at least until the end yeah, of the show. Yeah, so. yeah, okay, fair but, enough. Uh, but thank you very much, though. Um, but yeah, so, so Seamus the Plumber, uh, lots of, uh, you know, everyone just found it hilarious. Uh, Eva loving it, hilarious. Paddy Farrelly, welcome, uh, very good, loved it. Lots of clapping emojis. Um, and uh, yeah, and thank you very much. Yeah. Oh, thank you very much, yeah. Yeah, so. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you got a few bottles there, Xavier. <laughs> um, excellent, uh, so that was a great sketch here by, by Tyg. Uh, we're gonna go to uh, our next film, which is going to be introduced uh, via a pre-recorded message. And so please welcome to introduce us, uh, Napoleon Ramos. Take it away, Napoleon. Hi. I shot this movie in Dublin with my two kids who uh, were staying with me during the lockdown. Uh, we wanted to do something fun, something creative. And uh, I came up with this idea, which they liked it. And then we decided to shoot the movie together. 
Uh, the story of the movie is about a guy who spends a lot of time by himself during the lockdown, but uh, he stays in touch with his friends via Zoom. Uh, and then something changes. I hope you will like the movie, and uh, thanks for having me. What? A cure for the virus has been found. This is the end of the lockdown. And believe it or not, the cure is available right now in your local pharmacy. Are you sure this isn't fake news? Seriously? <laughs> this is crazy. What are we going to do now? Excellent. That was Napoleon Ramos there with, uh, with that film. Excellent job, uh, Napoleon. That looks amazing. Uh, beautiful shot, beautifully shot film. Uh, thank you for getting involved and sending it into us. Um, so uh, next up, we were going to have a film by Ray Grady because as some of you will know, he promised to make a film once every month for the 12 months of the cinema this year. Um, but alas, uh, we have a confession to make. Uh, and so to explain himself, please welcome Ray Grady. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, thank you very much, Kenny. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I'd love to have had another film in to show this month, uh, but unfortunately I did not have the time to make one. I had great intentions, I think on Monday morning I had an idea, and I said, well, maybe I could get something done if, if I can shoot it, and the shoot only lasts 30 seconds, and I can get someone else <laughs> to write a voiceover and edit it completely. But I didn't have time to even shoot it, um, unfortunately. But that, it is good uh, being busy over the last few months has, has kind of kept me sane, I think. So, yeah, I'm pretty lucky with that as well. So, yeah, um, it's disappointing not to have a film, but I'm pretty happy because of how busy we are at the moment, anyway. Yeah, and um, uh, Ray has, uh, and the group have been involved with the live streaming of the uh, Golden Film Flat, which is one of the reasons why you've been so busy and why you didn't get a chance to make the film. So. Are you excited to be doing the stream of the, the FLA? Yeah, definitely. Um, so the, over the last few months of, of, uh, of gathering in our living room uh, <laughs> once a month and uh, streaming the little cinema um, was, was great. Like, uh, it was a great experience for us and just to, uh, just was to push our kind of live streaming talents or, or skills mm -hmm. and see what we could do. And uh, in the midst of that, then we um, decided we 
would contact the Galway Film Fla and see if they'd be interested in the same services for um, for this year and for uh, uh, for putting their events online. And luckily, yeah, they were they were interested, so uh, we were able to to come on board. In the last few weeks, we've been uh, doing a lot of work and prep ahead of the uh, the opening night uh, next Tuesday on the seventh. So we'll have five, five or six days, Tuesday until Sunday, um, mm -hmm. of uh, live streams every day, Q and A's, uh, panels, all that. Um, we won't be live streaming the films. You'll be able to watch them um, by buying a ticket and all that. But all of our live streams will be going out through the website, uh, GalwayFilmFlad.com, and also through their social media as well. Um, but uh, more so than that, I suppose, I just wanted to thank all of uh, the guys, like Adrian here, who was the first person to contact you, I believe, mm. about potentially doing the live streams. And uh, he's been a massive part of, of putting together all of this. Uh, we wouldn't have known where to start without him, so a massive thank you to him. And then, of course, David from Unbound Media, um, a huge, huge help there and a huge kind of drive uh, behind us getting projects off the ground. And of course, Fintan Garrity as well for coming on board uh, for, the f uh, for the FLA and for a few other bits and pieces um, and really helping us out. So uh, yeah, just thank you to all those guys and thank you to yourself, Kenny, as well. Um, and yeah, hopefully we'll have a film, maybe not next month actually either, <laughs> but, <laughs> but hopefully the month after that. And let me say, well, I have you here as well, because yeah. uh, it was, like you said, it was Adrian who, first of all, when I said on Facebook, I think I might do a live stream, um, thinking it would be some easy thing to do. And then Adrian got in touch saying, hey, do you want any help with the live stream? And I was thinking, well, it might not be that hard. And then he said, well, I, I work in it as a profession. I was like, yeah, sure, may as well. Mm. And I thought it was going to be straightforward enough. And I realized how it's the amount of tech involved in this is it's crazy. And so if it wasn't for Adrian and yourself coming on board, first of all, there's no way we'd have done any, any live streaming to any quality, that which it should be. So thank you very much to Adrian and yourself for coming on board, for making it happen, and also to Dave and Finton for coming aboard as well and for helping us out. So uh, it's been brilliant. We wouldn't have done the live streams, the fourth one. We wouldn't have done any of these if it wasn't for your help. So we'll have you in person here. This is the first time you've been on camera since you started the live stream. So just thank you very much in person Cheers. for all your help. Cheers. Well, thanks very much. And uh, so uh, your film, what's the name of your film? Um, <laughs> uh, Non-existent. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I said a lot of thank you very much. Here. Sorry, sorry, Xavier. He said he's he running out of, uh, out of drink over there. Uh, so we we'll, we'll move on to the next film. And this is going to be uh, introduced via a uh, pre-recorded message. And so um, uh, John Morley has made a film and he uh, has made something for each of the, the four little cinema live streams. So introduce his film. Here is John Morley and also Vera Kilgallen. Take it away. It's Vera here and John. Um, we just want to say thanks a million for uh, having this throughout uh, COVID-19. Uh, we've been experimenting with lots of different things. Um, we hope to be back in the Roisin Dove soon. Yeah, thanks Kenny and the guys for hosting this. It really has been wonderful. Um, the film we have this month is based on W.B. Yeats's poem, He Wishes for the Clots of Heaven. It's not very long. Hope you enjoy it. work from the Gort Forge restored this tower for my wife George and may these characters remain when all is ruined once again. He wishes for the clots of heaven. 
Had I the heavens embroidered cloths, Inwrought with golden and silver light, The blue and the dim and the dark cloths of night and light and the half-light. I would spread the cloths under your feet, but I, being poor, have only my dreams. I have spread my dreams under your feet. Tread softly, because you tread on my dreams. Excellent. That was John Morley there and uh, also Vera Kagalin introducing it with him. Uh, John, thank you very much for getting involved again in the little cinema. Sorry, I keep saying thank you very much. I'm, <laughs> I'm not doing this to get Zabby a drunk, I promise I'm not. Um, but uh, yeah, so uh, that was very good. Uh, John, well done. Um, and we're going to go to our... Oh, look who it is. Ray oh, is gone. It's, it's uh, magic. Oh, how, how's it going? <laughs> <laughs> and so Matthew Blaney is back. So Matthew, do you want to read out a few comments there? Yeah, sure. Uh, so um, again, lots of love and feedback uh, with uh, Pangolin Secrets Revealed. Um, very, uh, Paddy Murphy, very vocal on it. I love the audio uh, file was played in 5G. Loving these <laughs> pangolins. Uh, brilliant. Uh, Connor says, best thing so far is Matthew saying emojis. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, Connor. Um, and Dennis is the only one speaking sense. That was all with the uh, uh, Pangolin Secrets Revealed, as well as lots of uh, love emojis and uh, <laughs> clapping. And, uh, and then with Napoleon's, uh, this is the end. Just uh, sort of more um, comments saying uh, a beautiful message. Looks looks like a commercial, very well shot, says Xavier. Um, and it, sorry, it's uh, I forgot my glasses, so I'm trying my best to read <laughs> off, off this uh, iPad. I, uh, I, iPad. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> iPaper. IPaper. So uh, yeah. So lots of comments. Uh, yeah. yeah. You're doing a great job with all the comments. And uh, someone was saying because when you were when you were gone, Ray was in, and uh, Paddy Murphy said. You know it's not Matt because he doesn't take off his little cinema hoodie ever. That's true. That's true, true Paddy. Yeah. You shower in your hoodie, true. don't you? I do. I do. Yeah. 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 Um, and someone else said we should have a rock, paper, scissors, me and Ray over the seat. I think that was Barry. Oh yeah. 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 Maybe later on I could have a rock, paper, scissors yeah. if we have time. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> um, excellent. So. Um, we'll go on to our next film, which is made by uh, Kevin O'Brien. And uh, Kevin O'Brien actually made something for his last one as well, but we were actually too full to screen it. Uh, and so he's made this for us. Um, I think it's hilarious. It's very, very funny. And it's called Artists in Quarantine. And so to introduce it, please welcome to uh, introduce his film, Kevin O'Brien. Take it away, Kevin. I don't know. You deal with them. Oh, little cinema. Uh, what time is it? Oh, yeah. Uh... Artists in Quarantine, that's my documentary that I've recently done. Uh, I got to interview some of Galway's top artists, um, you know, on their art and how the quarantine and the lockdown has affected their art. And if it's affected, you know, their sanity. Uh, to be fair, they're all doing pretty good, as am I, and I hope you all are too. Um, yeah, it was fascinating talking to these people. Uh, very interesting uh, group of characters. Um, hope you enjoy it. Artists in Quarantine. I'll see you at the next one. This week, we talked to some local artists about how the current lockdown is affecting their artwork.
from my perspective as an artist, it's given me an opportunity to be more in, introspective, um, but also have perspective. So it's a double-edged thing. Has quarantine been tough for artists? <laughs> Does the Pope shit in the woods? I don't know, I'm asking you. My name is Cullum. I write traditional channels, songs for obscure documentaries. Um, commissioned by sources that I can't currently reveal. But, uh, you know, pays the bills. I used to make friends in the, the while getting uh, the coffee at the, the local uh, cafe and standing two meters apart, I, it's rather difficult to keep up the same, uh, you know, um, socializing. It's a little bit like uh, speaking over a velvet rope in a, in a museum of sorts. My name is Francis O'Sullivan and I am the uh, Connacht uh, reigning uh, cross-country champion seven years running. And uh, unfortunately last year my uh, knee exploded and it, uh, it was completely gone. Uh, and then uh, I started to paint. I found that the, the, the social distancing and the fact that we've had to isolate ourselves, I found myself putting people into the pictures, which is something I never would have done, uh, because, uh, you know, I'd usually be into the nature and, uh, and the isolation of uh, just being, uh, you know, being by yourself in nature. And my pictures now are just like, the last few pictures I've done, they literally look like the pages out of a Where's Wally book, because there are people uh, filling the frame. You wouldn't even know if there's any nature there. It's just chock-a-block with, uh, you know, faces. My name is Chad Faceplant. I'm a retired surfer and I also do spray paint art on sheet metal. It's a funny time. Quarantine is a funny time. It has affected it. It's affected it. It's affected it. I would mostly spray paint surfing scenes from my from memory, things that I've seen and experienced. Um, although I think it's quite cliche and overdone to spray paint large, big um, swells and waves. So I paint very small, respectable waves. Um, and sometimes when people see my paintings of the surfer on the wave, they say like, ooh, I think you got, you know, the scale wrong. And uh, no, I didn't get the scale wrong. Hey there! Funny, funny time. Funny, funny time. Funny time. Thought the camera was off, silly me. Excellent. That was Kevin O'Brien there with that short, and I guess so so funny. Uh, great job playing all the different characters. Uh, there's going to be lots of comments from that coming in, I'm sure. Um, so, Kevin, well done on that. And uh, I think we'll go to Matthew to get some comments from uh, the film previous to that, which was uh, John Morley's film, or any other comments in general. Yeah, so uh, there's quite a few. There were quite a few uh, thanking Ray for all his hard work. Um, uh, so, Susan, Susan Gallegos loved the photography in uh, Tread Softly. Um, very nice short, says Bip. Fashion, very, very pretty, she says. Uh, Lovely flower sniffing Vera says Bip. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Great job, John and Vera says uh, John Bolton's painter. Um, and Kev, uh, Johnny Graham has a question for Ray, which was: Is the hardest part of live streaming uh, cleaning your house once once a month when Kenny comes over? Um, it's Ray. Ray has uh, coincidentally just left the room, <laughs> so he obviously knew what was coming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah. And he's back. The answer is we have to clean it up afterwards, but not beforehand. So yeah. that's grand. So the answer is we have to clean it up afterwards and not beforehand, so yeah. it's grand. I'm so. a Tasmanian devil. Come in, make a mess, leave. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. And so. I, I got to give a shout out to Bip Henderson as well for his comment for when uh, Ray was speaking. He said, way to go, or should I say, Ray to go. <laughs> what a pun. <laughs> Brilliant Bip, yeah. Best pun of the night. And I got to give a shout out to uh, Sarah Barbosa as well, watching from Canada. Uh, who it says, hashtag Kenny's Red Sox. These have caused nice. quite a stir. Beautiful. <laughs> and Xavier then commented saying, uh, when you feel like there's no longer any excitement in the world, dot, 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 hashtag Kenny's Red Sox. <laughs> 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 um, so let's see, uh, we will go to the next film, I think, and after that we'll come in back for comments from um, uh, ah, Kevin O'Brien's film. Yeah. yeah. Okay, actually oh. I might just give a quick shout out just for if anyone wants to get involved with the, uh, the PayPal link. If anyone wants to uh, contribute to Little Cinema or to donate anything, uh, every little contribution helps and helps us to do more live streams because uh, these boys have given up their time to, to do this and they have a lot of work on their plates, which they could be working on. So we appreciate the fact that they're doing this with us. Um, and uh, so the PayPal is uh, paypal.me forward slash Little Cinema. Um, anything is, is appreciated and um, uh, whatever you can do, uh, we say thank you very much too. So drink away there, Xavier. Um, we'll go to uh, the next film, so which is going to be introduced via a pre-recorded introduction, and this, this is made this is a lovely short made by uh, Cleo and Kaylin McKeown Burke. So please, uh, Cleo and Kaylin, take it away. Hi everyone, I'm Cleo, and this is my brother Callan. At the start of quarantine, we collab together on a short film called The Creative Solace. The film is about a music producer who lacks the inspiration to make music but find inspiration through nature and the world around it. We made this film as part of my college course in GTI. Um, at the end of the year we had to make a film, but obviously because of quarantine um, I didn't have the capability of going and making an actual pr proper production, so I teamed up with my brother and we made this short film. So yeah, hope you enjoy! <laughs> You finished? 
Sorry, yeah, yeah. sorry. Okay. Uh, so for anyone who was uh, watching there in the last film, uh, before we went to the last film, um, <laughs> you, can hear, you can hear Matthew vaping. <laughs> and I think Paddy Murphy commented on it. Yeah, yeah, he did. He said, I know that sound from anywhere, fellow vaping, fellow vapor. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so um, lots of uh, great feedback on Kevin O'Brien's uh, artists in quarantine. Uh, there was a uh, before that there was a um, a comment from Paddy, which was, um, "I'll be honest with you, I think you need an eye doctor." So uh, that's a little in joke, uh, actually. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, uh, but yeah, Kevin is fair good, isn't he? Says Connor Quinlan. Yeah. Agreed. Um, great job, says Sarah Barbosa. Artists really do start to look alike, don't they? Says uh, John Vantner's painter. Uh, Yao, nice one, Kevin, from Dundra. And uh, yeah, there were quite a few more, but um, it was, uh, I was distracted by the, the, <laughs> the, the vaping that I did, so uh, yeah. <laughs> you were distracted by back, your own vaping. Yeah, exactly. So back, back to you, uh, Kenny, in okay, the office. Very good. Yeah. I see Max Webb just commented there saying, uh, dog count very low this month. Hashtag, who locked the dogs up? Uh, it might explain Liam's absence. You never know. Ah. Um, so, yeah, Max, well spotted that there's no dogs. Other than the int introduction done by uh, Dermot. Um, so, yeah, because last month we had lots of dogs. Yeah, and yeah, the yeah. previous month, so... Makes you think. <laughs> <laughs> um, great. Okay, so we're going to go to our next uh, filmmaker. And they're joining us live on Zoom. So, uh, please welcome to the Little Cinema live stream, Teresa Levina and uh, Gavin Lennon. How are you guys? Hey guys, good, good to see you. Thank you very much for joining us. Yeah, yeah, no, thanks for having us. And so, uh, do you want to tell us about uh, the documentary that you made, that you made? Yeah, so yeah. I suppose, like, good for you on tonight. We're uh, just making the most of the pandemic, yeah. and um, and well, Teresa, <coughs> she she had started it uh, a, a while ago, hadn't you? The haunted Ireland or yeah, the I corners. I had some yeah. uh, I had filmed some stuff before, and then once the restrictions were lifted, we said, okay, let's do a couple of uh, episodes on this kind of a uh, dark history of Ireland mm. uh, slash ghosts slash information. I think they're pretty cool because they give you a lot of information. And Brian is so is such a cute guy, like you know, he's a lovely, he's like yeah, he's a, a great storyteller. Sac yeah, yeah, he's a brilliant yeah. storyteller. So we uh, Brian is not doing his walks because he's been affected by COVID also. So we thought, okay, why yeah. not? You know, so we're all enjoying. Yeah. And now he's starting to get a format. Uh, we got good news uh, from uh, this guy, Michael Benson. He did um, Wexford Paranormal and he's jumping on board. So that was it's, yeah, it's it's good brilliant. news. It's so, oh, brilliant, yeah, fantastic. So, so we're putting a few episodes, like kind of releasing them, you know, each week and see if this grows a little mm -hmm. audience and just take it a little mm -hmm. bit further. Maybe, you know, uh, we're having fun anyway. Yeah, this is yeah, cool. yeah. We started like Gab and I, and now finally we have like a team behind, you know. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. it's been more fun now, more fun. Yeah. Excellent. And it, it's Brian Nolan, who is well known around Galway as a historian, as a, as a tour guide. He's the person who hosts the, uh, the episodes for you. Yeah. 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 Ah, he's, he's been great. Yeah. I mean, he, like, he knows so much about, you know, the history of Galway alone, uh, mm. you know, the families. Um, you know, we were in Fort Hill Cemetery at one stage and like, he just he just knows so much, you know. Yeah. Excellent. So That's watch out for episodes coming every week is uh, some of them are more spooky than others. We were filming in Ballinas Low also in the mental asylum and that was really spooky. So <laughs> that one will be yeah. more kind of ghostly than others, you know? Uh, yeah, so... Uh, yeah. That's, so that's which, um, which episode will, will be watching now? You can give us a brief uh, synopsis of this episode. So um, actually yeah. this is, uh, I mentioned Fort Hill Cemetery. So uh, this is the, the first one we went out with Brian um, we went to Fort Hill Cemetery and we met the, the man who's been looking after it um, for, for a long time and his, I believe his, his father did and then maybe his grandfather yeah. as well. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, he was telling us just the different stories about the There's still a, an old ossery there. Obviously, they don't use it for collecting the bones anymore, but, it, but it's still there. Um, there's a plaque, I think you'll see it, and there's a plaque uh, dedicated to um, the... How many was? How many? How many said two hundred um, Spanish sailors? Don't say much. 
uh, <laughs> two on the Spanish sailors that that were beheaded. Uh, the don't say yeah. much. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> you can watch it. Huh? Yeah, you can watch it. Uh, yeah, but this is the Spanish Armada, which was fascinating to find out about this. So I hope you find it interesting also. Excellent. Guys, uh, Gavin and Teresa, thank you very much for joining us and great job on the, on the documentary as well. Thanks, thanks Kenny. Thanks, great. Kenny. Enjoy. Thank you. See you later. Thank Bye. you. Enjoy, Bye. everyone. Irish, we love our dark, full-bodied red wines, and I think it's because of that Spanish background in us. A lot of us have a, ge have a genetic predisposition to liking that sort of Spanish wine. We love going to Spain on holidays and Portugal, whatever. Why wouldn't we? Half of us are half Spanish. If you do a DNA test, you end up looking and finding out that where ancestors have come from way down there in Spain. But a lot of them came here particularly uh, in the 16th century. 16th century was a very troubled time here in Ireland and in 1588 the English were in control of course they'd had many battles we had just gotten Queen Elizabeth in uh, ahead of uh, her father Henry VIII two nasty people and they were colonizing Ireland they were at war with the O'Neills and the O'Donnells and then suddenly out of the blue the King Philip of Spain decided to invade England with the Grand Armada he sent up nearly 200 ships to invade England and they sailed up to Holland and then around the top of Ireland doing a feint to come in around Southampton, surprise the English, except the surprise they got was a hurricane of two centuries strength that sank 48 ships of the Spanish Armada along the coast of Ireland from Armagh all the way down to, to Kerry and particularly Mayo and Galway where many of the ships sank and eventually, of course, some survivors, you know, these ships were running aground, they were being attacked by the English, they captured uh, nearly 200 Spanish sailors and soldiers, brought them to Galway under kind of open house arrest because we were trading with Spain. We knew who their parents were, we knew their towns. And we figured when Queen Elizabeth calmed down that maybe, you know, we could ransom them back to their hometowns and get some money for them. Queen Elizabeth got wind of our treachery in January of 1589 and by June of 1589 she sent her viceroy a guy called William Fitzwilliam imagine being called Bill MacBill he arrived to Galway on a June afternoon around this time of the year and on one afternoon he tortured the Spanish sailors looking for the gold and silver that he thought they had because don't forget he was the boss and spoils the war he was going to get wealthy from these they had nothing, they had lost everything when their ships were wrecked, or they had given it away to the Irish, or it was taken by the Irish. Anyway, in a fit of anger, on one afternoon on the streets of Galway, William Fitzwilliam had his troops behead 200 Spanish sailors on the streets of Galway. On Abbeygate Street, just in front of the big gate that led out to Fort Hill, to that cemetery that we were just in. That cemetery is certainly over... 500 years old, there was a monastery there uh, which the, the monks, the Augustinian monks had built uh, back in 1500. But by 1588 uh, it became a scene of tragedy and terror as those young men were tied hand and foot and were laid down on the street and their heads were hacked off with very blunt swords with wicked ferocity in the hope that they would give up the gold and silver that they no longer had. It was a tragedy for Galway, it was a tragedy for Ireland, it was certainly a tragedy for the Spanish sailors, but their blood ran freely down the streets of Galway, turning the streets red. The women of Galway, weeping and crying, particularly the women of the Clada, they made winding sheets for those young men and buried their bodies in the cemetery at Fort Hill, 
not their heads. Their heads were sent by horseback to all the outlying towns and villages around Mayo and Galway and Clare to be put on spikes outside the gates of those towns as a warning to the locals not to aid the Spanish and of course as a warning to the town of Galway that they were no longer uh, a Spanish city trading with Spain but they were part of Queen Elizabeth's wicked British Empire. Some nights I passed down with a walking tour down Abbeygate Street and I walked past the Pro Cathedral, heading to the back of the shopping centre, that narrow canyon of that street that's over 600 years old. And if you stop and you imagine, you can hear the screams of terror, the moans of the dying and the soon to be dead and beheaded. You can hear the excitement in the soldiers' voices as they get about their awful butchery work. You can hear the women crying. That street is the most haunted street in Goway, without a doubt. I feel a chill every time I walk past on the hottest summer day, on the coldest winter afternoon. I get a chill because I know I'm walking over the slippery blood of the Spanish soldiers. Excellent. We're back in the room. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. Well done there to uh, Teresa and Gavin for making that documentary. You're very, very good. Um, I think we're going to go to a few comments from our comments correspondent, Matthew Blaney. Hi, Kenny. How are you? I'm actually I'm very good. Thank you very good much. Um, Sorry, Xavier. That was, a, that was an accidental. Thank you very much. <laughs> go on. Yeah, so uh, lots of uh, lovely comments for uh, Cleo and Callum's creative solace. Um, Megan McKeown Joyce uh, says, so proud of her um, cousins. Um, Eileen Burke says, my, they're my wonderful uh, grandkids. Nice one, Burks. That was sick, says Kevin O'Brien. Uh, Connor Burke says, so proud of my two uh, young ones. Um, Paddy Murphy says, really clever, really loved that one. And uh, uh, Hedgehog Shorts said, great short, and it's great to see young kids making films. Hmm. Um, yeah, just... Brilliant. Which Fantastic. is great. For the last few screens, we've had young people get yeah. involved and making films and like uh, making films with their parents or whatever, just by themselves. So it's great to see the, the young generation get involved absolutely. in filmmaking. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And uh, so at the moment, we have Canada watching with Sarah Barbosa. We have New York watching with Xavier Kadish, very drunk Xavier Kadish. <laughs> and we have California watching with Yezi Rial. Welcome, re welcome Yezi. Uh, thank you all very much for joining in. Um, and uh, let's see, what have we got next? We have, uh, oh yeah, I want to say thank you very much to those who donated on PayPal so far. Uh, Patrick Murphy, uh, sorry, Patrick Murphy, Patrick Kelly, thank you very much. Uh, Barry Fahey also, thank you very much. Uh, Abby of the Arts, that's JVP, John Walters Painter, and uh, Megan Beacon Joyce, thank you all very, very much, really appreciate it. Um, and so now I think we're going to go to our next film, which is uh, Dicement Productions. They have recorded the pre-recorded uh, introduction for us for it. So please take it away, Shane O'Keefe from Dicemen Productions. Shane here from Dicemen Productions. Thank you very much once again for Little Cinema Galway for allowing us to be able to showcase our work. Sorry, it's, it's roasting in here. That's better. Uh, the song is kind of like a parody from the movie 1917, fantastic movie. You will hear the singing at the end of... Yeah, I'm not going to spoil it, I'm not going to spoil it. But it's from that movie. Uh, we kind of did our own take on it, with myself singing, with uh, Louis Boogie, who I work with doing the music. He was directing as well. We had a cameraman, all socially distant, don't worry. But uh, thank you very much to Little Cinema Galway for giving us the opportunity to showcase our work. Uh, it was great to get to be a part of it last month with our animation so it's great to come back with a live action thing so best of luck to everyone and hopefully you'll enjoy this is poor wayfaring strange by i am a poor wayfaring stranger i'm traveling through this world of war 
Yet there's no sickness, toil, nor danger in that bright land to which I go. I'm going up to drink some lager. I'm going Excellent. That was very good there. That was uh, Shane O'Keefe from Diceman Productions. Great job, guys. It was very, very good. Um, now, I've actually had to sit up because I caught myself in the, in the, in the camera there. Uh, I looked like I was just like a little, <laughs> I was like a slot just <laughs> sitting on the chair. So I'm trying to sit up. You, you should be warning me that I have my slouching. So. Sorry, yeah. I, you're, yeah. You're sitting very well and I'm here like a little slot sitting well, down. Apparently, so. I've been lean, leaning into the camera, so sorry about that. Um, yeah, but... Uh, we got a few comments coming in? Yeah, yeah. There's... A, Good few comments for uh, Teresa and Gavin's uh, documentary. Um, but first of all, there, there was another comment uh, which said, which was by Yessi um, Real. Real, which is late to uh, Kenny's Red Sox Admirers Club. Greetings from California. Hello, Yessi. Thank you for joining us. But uh, yeah, so uh, Paddy Murphy was saying, G Jesus, that's a lot of rolling heads. Uh, ouch, says Eva Lezinska. Sorry, I probably messed, butchered your name, sorry. <laughs> um, wow, uh, Nikki Fahey. Uh, very do, it, do it in the Owen Wilson voice. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Perfect Owen Wilson. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, the very interesting, shocking stuff, says Kevin O'Brien. Um, fantastic stuff. I love these kind of things, says pa Paddy Murphy. Uh, that was great. Very interesting, Andrew uh, Malia. And uh, a, a few more uh, thumbs up and great. That was great. So, yeah, hmm. back to you, Kenny, um, in, in the studio. <laughs> back to me in the studio. <laughs> <laughs> um, ex yeah, actually, the documentary made by uh, Teresa and Gavin, it was great. I, I, 
you hear about the Spanish Armada, but you never really know about the real effects of what it had in the city or, or links with the Spanish Armada. So it was excellent. Great job on it, guys. And, and also, thank you to uh, Teresa from Nova Productions, who have uh, contributed to our PayPal as well, and also to uh, Susan Gallegos. Thank you very much also. Um, and uh, yes, yeah, so we'll get to back, back to a few more comments in a few minutes. We're going to go to our next uh, filmmaker, who is waiting to speak to us now uh, live via Zoom. So welcome to the, the show, Connor Quinlan. How are you, Connor? Hey, Kenny. How are you? I'm very good. Are you enjoying the show? Oh, loving it, loving it. Some seriously good stuff. Like Amazing, yeah. people are, have used this lockdown well, do you know? Absolutely, yeah, it's fantastic. Um, and as you have used it well also, you've made a fantastic short. Thanks very much. Yeah, it was one of those things where it was at that time when you were kind of like, oh, I have to do something. Like, I can't just waste this time. Uh, and I get to be in this short with uh, one of my best mates, Brendan Quinn. And we actually haven't worked together in two years since the... Uh, 48 hour challenge in what year was that 2018 2018 yeah which uh, your team won that 48 hour challenge um uh, yeah, which a film was... connection interrupted yeah we were delighted with that but um yeah working with brendan is one of my favorite things he's one of those uh one of those actors i'd work with for the rest of my life and be happy you know hmm. so he lives in belfast so when lockdown happened we kind of said you know i have as much chance to make a film with you right now than someone that lives down the street so yeah. you know let's do it so yeah it's, just, it's great you have a great rapport together you obviously you've known each other for a long time and you kind of react well off each other yeah we went to um we went to drama school together in dublin and lived together at the time and you know we, we were always coming up with like little little ideas to make sketches and we didn't do too many in, in the end but i'm um, very happy to do this one you know hmm. really Really and fun. this is edited by your brother, Ronnie? Yeah, Ronnie, of course. He's the man who uh, will do all my films for <laughs> free, apparently. Um, no, he's, Ronnie is an extremely talented editor, so he was able to do make a few tricks, make this look a bit better. So we filmed mm -hmm. it all on iPhones. So, uh, oh, uh, would these, yeah. these were filmed on iPhones, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Both, okay. uh, both sides of it filmed on iPhones. Uh, all the sound on the iPhone as well, so... Happy. Excellent. Happy I, I thought it was that. actually DSLRs used because the image is very good in it. Yeah, no, the iPhones are, are good. I don't want to say that we're like Steven Soderbergh, but like... Yeah. <laughs> um, but you are. Oh, we are. But we are. You said it. <laughs> um, so um, give us the name of the film and we'll let the people watch it then. What's the name of it? The film is uh, Pint, Pints in a Time of Covid. And it's you and Brendan... Yeah, trying to have Friday night pints over Zoom. Excellent. So. Conor Quinlan, thank you for joining us. Thank you for coming live on Zoom and for uh, making the film for us and uh, showing it with thank us. Thank you very much. Me. Much appreciated. Cheers. Thank you. See you later. See you. Well, how are you now? Well, lad, it's good to see you. Yeah, good to see you too, buddy. Hey, <laughs> my go. Friday night pints. Yeah, Friday night pints. It's just like being in a bar. Yeah, exactly. What the? Connor, what are you drinking? Pink G and T. I know, I know. Just we didn't have any beer in the house and. I forgot to go to the off-license, all right? So this was all we had, and it's just handy. You know there's plenty of beer in the fridge. <laughs> uh, sorry, lad. Weird connection there. Is that strawberries in it? And grapefruit. <laughs> oh, guess who messaged me the other day? I don't know. Guess. Uh, was it uh, one of the boils? I'm taking this guess really seriously. Um, was it one of your axes? Uh, Sarah, Louise, <laughs> Aaron. Sorry, ma'am. I think there was a delay there or something. She was always around the house when we lived together. Uh, I don't know. Uh, was it Emma, Susan? I'm running a name, Emma. Man, I'm surprised you didn't get this. It was Sarah. I said Sarah. Said it. Twice, actually.
So when was the last time you saw the missus? A month ago. Ah, that's tough. Yeah. I miss her, man. Of course you do. She's great crack. Do you know what I miss the most? No. Oh, here we go. <laughs> well, she used to do this thing right, every night. And she said everyone did it where she comes from. And to be honest, I didn't think it was going to reach, but then I put my... Brendan, oh, yeah. you threw those glasses. Yeah, no worries, Mum. It's fine. What are you talking about? Yeah, nothing. Nothing. Just, uh, uh, um, challenging the... Who are you talking to? Uh, Connor. Tell her. Tell her what you told me. Go on. Well, I was just going to say... know what actually oh, happened. Sorry. sorry, go ahead. Oh, sorry. Sorry, no, you go ahead. No, I was just, just going to say, but... No, you no I was ahead. just going to... Oh, sorry, man. Well, sorry. I... Go, well, go for it. Are you, so you're going to let me speak now? Or do you want me to wait for you? Well, you don't have to be all pissy about it, all right? Just... Well, no, it's being pissy. not I'm my fault. It's the being, delay. Um... Sorry, do you, oh, sorry, do you want to talk? Do you want to talk? I'll just, I'll just no, sit no, back fine, and listen fine, to you. Here go. we go. Here we go. Oh my God, here we go. What do you mean, here we go? I'm just, I'm just waiting on you. Like, I'm, I'm waiting on you in life, really. Oh man, you, you're so precious sometimes, you know that. Precious, precious. Here we go. Now it's all coming out. Now, all I wanted was a few drinks uh, on a Friday night, but uh, you just you just keep pushing. Keep pushing. You, I mean, you pushing you, it. Do you want to, do you, would you like to speak oh, man, now? Or would you like me to speak? You need to grow up. You I know who you sound up. like. You sound like my That's mother. This is who you sound like. I feel like I'm living with my mother. Wait, how dare you slander your mother? She is a saint. Eileen is a lovely woman. Technically, I am living woman. with my mother, but... Okay. Okay. So then, little Timmy turns around and he says to her, but sure, that's not even your chalk, Mrs. McGinley. <laughs> Do you not get it? That's not even your chalk. Is this thing frozen again? Serious? Did you hear any of... Man, this is a nightmare. I'm sorry, I'm gone. All right, I'll see you in a few months. Good luck. That's <laughs> <laughs> not even your chalk, Mrs. McGinley, because of the... <laughs> <laughs> Very good, man. Very good. Hello? Hey, Connor. Hello? City of stars, are you... Sorry, that's not... City of stars, are... Sorry. City of stars, are you, no, city of stars, are you shining, no, it's almost though, city of stars, are you, no, city of, city, 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 city I can't believe you didn't stars. touch it before lockdown. City of stars, are you, no. City of stars, city, city, D sharp, D, D sharp, city of stars, oh for Excellent. That was Conor Quinlan there introducing his short, which is called Pint in a Time of Covid. Uh, that is it. That's it. Excellent. Well done, guys. That was very, very good. Um, so I think we'll get a few more comments from our uh, comments correspondent. Matthew Blaney, how are you? I'm great, thanks. How are you, Kenny? I'm good, thank you. Good, good. Uh, just want to uh, just uh, get this one in first. Uh, Eva says, that was pretty correct, Matthew, so I'm uh, glad to hear I didn't butcher your name. Uh, so there are quite a few interesting comments for uh, Diceman Productions. Um, Michael John Byrne said, A Drinker's Lament, excellent stuff, lads. Um, Kevin O'Brien said, uh, Nice one, Shane and the lads. This is bloody hilarious. Paddy Murphy was loving it. Um, had lovely stuff, says Buyback. Uh, great location, uh, Sarah Barbosa. And quite a few uh, MOJs of... Uh, 
caps. Emojis. Uh, emojis. <laughs> Thumbs up. Brilliant. Great. Yeah. So over, uh, back to you, uh, Kenny. Back to me in the studio. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Matthew Blaine, thank you very much. You're very welcome. Yeah. Thank, you. Yeah. thank you. Um, and I want to say also thank you to our contributors, uh, Andrew Melia uh, and also uh, Yezi Real. Thank you very much. Really appreciate it. Um, uh, and it helped to give the boys something for a uh, big thank you for helping us out with this. Um, so thank you very, very much. I think, Yezi, thank you for tuning in from all the way from California. I really appreciate it. Um, and so uh, let's see. We have uh, one more film to go. Uh, and so before we go to that, I might just give the, the PayPal link one more time. What do you think? Uh, yeah, I think... Sure, why not? <laughs> <laughs> it's a good decision. Sure, why, oh, sure no harm. We'll have a vote. What harm? I'll vote yes. How would you vote? Uh, yes. Okay, uh, that's, that's two for yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, it's, so our PayPal link, if you'd like to contribute anything, is... It's... <laughs> is, uh, <laughs> should be See, down we'll there. We'll say it so together. Yeah. PayPal dot... dot mm, me, me pay, forward, forward slash, slash little cinema. cinema. Very good. <laughs> um, so thank you all very much for everyone who has contributed already. Um, there's no pressure on anyone to contribute, but anyone who wants to, we thank you very much. Uh, so now we're go going to go to the last film of the night, and it is by uh, one of Galway's finest filmmakers and one of the nicest guys. Please welcome to, this, to the Little Cinema live stream, Barry Fahey. Barry, how are you? Uh, very good, Kenny. How are you? Thank, thank you for that very generous introduction. <laughs> Well, it's good to see you again. How How is uh, lockdown treating you? Yeah, good. Uh, I was saying it to a couple of people earlier. I kind of feel like I have like a survivor's guilt. Like uh, I've kind of been working the whole way through the lockdown. So other than moving to shift work, not a huge amount has changed for me. So uh, I, I've been lucky in that sense that I've still had a routine that a lot mm. of people didn't have. So um, I'm good. Uh, I'm actually... I'm kind of jealous of the people uh, who I watch on the live stream every month who've gotten to create stuff yeah. every month <laughs> and stuff like that. And, uh, and not having that time or even the crew that I'm used to working with being available was, uh, was, you know, it was kind of disappointing because I love making movies with my friends and, uh, and stuff like that. So, but uh, I'm so impressed with the amazing content that people have been able to make uh, on their own. Yeah, it's, um, it's funny when a lockdown happened, I think everyone went through a phase of going, what, what do we do now? And then it does make you see filmmaking in a different way where you go, I wonder kind of that idea I had before, could I make that now by myself? And it does make you kind of discover other ways to make stuff happen. And so throughout the four months uh, we've had, if anyone could hear anything, it's, it's Matthew vaping. <laughs> you've got Darth Vader <laughs> over here. Um, <laughs> um, but it's okay, it's not a problem. You can, you can <laughs> don't kill yourself holding it in. Um, but uh, the uh, yeah, so I think over the four months we've seen that people have been making stuff which they probably wouldn't make in normal circumstances, which is great to see that people are uh, going out of their comfort zone and making stuff which is different. Um, Absolutely, so yeah. Like finding a creative uh, solution to a problem is always kind of part of filmmaking, but you know you normally have a collaborative team to kind of do that with, and finding ways to do it on your own has been really interesting. And I'm really impressed with what I've seen with with a lot of people who've been making stuff. Excellent. And you've been watching every, every show as well, which we appreciate. You've been kind of contribute as well, which we really appreciate as well. Um, so yeah, no problem. If, if I was going to the Roisin, I'd be putting money on the door anyway. So uh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, tell us about uh, this film. So. Uh, so this film was a concept that me and uh, Paddy Murphy came up with uh, uh, before lockdown. Shout I think out it might to Paddy have been... Murphy, by the way. Yeah, uh, Paddy. Uh, I'm actually, now that things have opened up, I can actually go see Paddy next weekend. So uh, they're yeah, looking forward to that. It's been a long three months. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, so it was a concept me and Patty came up with ages ago about, you know, what it would be like to kind of sit down and experience, you know, life flashing before your eyes uh, in your final moments. So mm. uh, we kind of thought about how how we could do that in a, a manageable way. And we thought by by taking it through one person reliving the experience rather than seeing it all. And, you know, because it could have cost a lot of money to make and mm. a big crew to make it if you were to see everything. But I think seeing it from this perspective, uh, we were able to do it on a smaller crew and uh, have a little bit more creative fun with it as well. So, And you had a, uh, a professional model as a star of it, did you? I did. You might know him. Uh, he's the guy with the Peaky Blinders haircut uh, who sits across from you sometimes. Not this guy. No, this guy. That guy right there. That's the guy from the movie. I have to get a, <laughs> I, I'll get your autograph before this is over. So good. Absolutely. Goodness. <laughs> <laughs> 
So Absolutely. yeah, it was it was a crew of uh, four of us. It was uh, myself, Matthew, uh, Vachin, and uh, Martin Nee as well. So just the four of us and uh, and Patty who wrote it and the five of us basically put the whole thing together. We had we also entered it into another competition that was a seventy two hour film competition. So we basically had from Friday uh, afternoon till Sunday night to uh, get it done and made. So quick turnaround. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, amazing turnaround. Actually, I just realized that uh, Matthew can't hear the conversation. <laughs> so, oh, excellent. So, as we were talking, he, he didn't realize we were talking about him. Uh, but I'm sure He's, he knows what we mean. We didn't say anything wrong this yeah, time. Nothing bad. Model. Nothing bad. <laughs> nothing model. Um, yeah, so um, this is called Before Your Eyes. Before Your Eyes. And uh, Barry, great job in the film. We'll launch to all the cooter involved in it. And uh, hopefully you enjoy your meetup with Paddy Murphy when you see him. Will do. <laughs> Great. Thanks for joining Take us. Take care, tonight. everybody. Thanks. Thank you. See you, Barry. You know the way they say your life flashes before your eyes when you die? Well, I'm here to tell you that's true. I was an easy birth, apparently. 45 minutes, start to finish. My mum named me after my uncle, who passed away earlier that year. David. Our first holiday, I was only two, but I remember Dad taking me swimming. Of course, I was that kid, the one who couldn't be away from Mum. I made friends pretty quickly, though, especially her. Things got hard when mum and dad started fighting. I... I didn't know what to do. Eventually, dad couldn't take it anymore. Just like that, he was gone. And it was just me and mum. But I still had... her. We started going out to clubs, bands. I finally started to feel like I had a clue. But of course, not everything goes to plan. I'll be honest with you, it was a pretty solid punch. Like everything else, she went away to college, the other side of the country. And well, mum got sick, so I stayed to look after her. No college for me. Not that I would have went anyway. I got a job at a local industrial facility, welding. It was a tough job, but it paid well, and I was close to Mum. And it wasn't all that bad. I was having a lot of fun, going out every weekend and, and partying. Mum got worse. It was inevitable. Doesn't mean it hurt any less. She was the only stable thing I had left. That was when she came back. Remember her? The one from before? <laughs> she graduated, got a degree, and came right back to our little podunk town to be a doctor. She could have picked anywhere, but she came home. We spent our weekends hiking, talking. Eventually we... Well, we became something. A couple. It was the happiest I'd been in the longest time. Mum got sicker. She was there for her, doing everything she could. Against all the odds, she got better. She was there at her wedding. Mum was so happy. And she, my beautiful bride, was more beautiful than I could possibly describe. We started trying for a baby. Mum's health continued to improve. I applied to a local college. Everything was starting to look up. Until I got the call. Mum needed me. They didn't specify why but I immediately presumed the worst. Maybe I shouldn't have. Could have been anything, but... And there she was. David, David, it's me. 
even in my last moments, she was there. David, please stay with me. David. Always. David, please wake up. Excellent. That was Barry Fahey there with that film, um, Before Your Eyes. Thought that was uh, excellent uh, for, for done such a short amount of time, such a small crew. Excellent job. I think the, the, the soundscape and the, the obviously the lighting uh, adds so much to that. It was a great job. And Matthew, well done yourself. You were very good in it. Thank you. Thanks very much, Kenny. Um, <laughs> we're going to... The, there's a <laughs> no, 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 take your compliment first. Oh, yeah. yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, it was was uh, it difficult to, to do? Uh, yeah, to be honest, it was actually. It was uh, like it's always very easy to work with Barry um, and Celtic Badgers, so it was really relaxed. But I never really kind of acted with those kind of emotions, uh, happy and sad, uh, so drastically. So hopefully, I um, pulled it off as hopefully they're happy. I think they are. Uh, mm, so it was quite difficult, yeah. I thought you were great, then, Joe. It was very good. Cheers. Thanks. So thanks, well done. thanks very much. Uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, so um, th there were some interesting developments in the comments uh, earlier. <laughs> um, so somebody was, I think it was Paddy, was asking Xavier, "Are you still alive?" And somebody, I think Max, responded with, "I believe he's hospitalised with liver failure." <laughs> um, hopefully not. For those who may have tuned in later, before the point where Xavier said it, he said that uh, himself and his mate were watching from New York, and whenever I said thank you very much, they took a shot. So, um, so that's the context. Yeah, uh, yeah. If you was taking a shot, I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, back to uh, Connor Quinlan's uh, film. It's uh, hashtag relatable, said pa Paddy Murphy. Um, Drink it, Connor Quinlan's when lockdown is over, said John Bontner's painter. Um, is the Tom Watts painting looking down uh, in shame at the pink gin drinking, says Max Webb. You really captured the lockdown, says Claire Ahern. Could you say Tom Waits, not Tom Watts. Tom Waits, sorry, uh, <laughs> I do beg your pardon. Uh, uh, phenomenal Paddy Murphy, and uh, yeah, so, and then on to Barry and Paddy's film, Before Your Eyes. Mm. Well, I might just, uh, before I go on to that, I'll just sure. say thank you to everyone who contributed uh, on paper, just to give everyone a shout out again. Thank, we pre appreciate it so much. Um, so, uh, uh, Patrick Kelly, Barry Fahey, Abby of the Arts, John Walters Painter, um, Megan McCoy Joyce, Susan Gallegos, uh, Nova Productions, Teresa Levina, uh, Andrew Melia, uh, Yezi Riel, uh, Ruth McNally. Uh, thank you all very, very much. Really appreciate it. Um, and it's uh, it, like it's, so much work was in, into this from the from the background which the lads have done, and which I'd have done as well. But the lads put in so much work to make it happen. So we really, really appreciate it. Um, do you have any more comments to go through? Yeah, there for yeah. so there's, there's quite a few comments. Um, I'll try and get to as many as I can. Uh, so uh, John Valtner's painter said, what a great uh, short to end the, the night. Um, so well played with a minimum of uh, light and sound, says Eva. Uh, Napo Ramos says, great short. Uh, Barry is the best Celtic badger, says Paddy. Um, great film for a crew of four, says Sarah Barbosa. Great short Barry, says Brian Waldron, who also um, made a good point that Matthew made a great recovery from the car crash. Um, and go Matthew from Claire, and mm. lovely use of lighting from Teresa. And there's mm. quite a few more. And I see um, Xavier is, um, is alive. He oh, says, good. oh yeah, ha ha ha, I had to rub my ribs. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, uh, cooking, two hours in oven, great job Matthew. Uh, so, Xavi, I'm glad that you survived, and my thank yous didn't put you over the edge. Um, and before we finish, just want to give thank out thank you to all the filmmakers again. Uh, so we had um, uh, Dermot Petty, uh, we had uh, John McLean from Hedgehog Shorts, we had uh, Ty Devery, uh, Michael John Byrne, Napoleon Ramos, uh, Ray Grady, who interviewed what I'm making the film, uh -huh. uh, John Morley, and Vera Kilgallen. Uh, Kevin O'Brien, uh, Cleo and Kaylin McKeown-Burke, uh, 
uh, Teresa Levina and Gavin Lennon, uh, Shane O'Keefe from Diceman Productions, uh, Connor Quinlan and Brendan Quinn and Barry Fahey. They're all the filmmakers who were talking to us tonight. Um, and we, uh, we appreciate the amount of effort which people go to to make films. Uh, make, as you know yourself, Matthew, making films is never easy. Yeah. And the fact that all these films, like in the four months, every film that, is, that has been made has been made within the lockdown period. Yeah. And so it, that's on average say 15, 16 films a night. So over yeah. four, that's like 64 films which wouldn't have been made or which have been made during the lockdown. Yeah. And yeah. so it's a phenomenal amount of work that people have put in. And so thank you all very much for getting involved and for making stuff. Um, we'll see. We don't know what the plan is. We might do more live streams. We don't know how, what's going to happen with the lockdown restrictions, regulations, that kind of stuff. But I've loved it. And it's great work with the whole group, crew here. It's been great fun. Great to have you here as well, uh, doing the live um, comment section for us. Um, and let's see, uh, is, there any, is there anything else that came in there that you want to say or anything, or is there anything you want to say from your own point of view? Uh, just, uh, it's great. Uh, thank you, Kenny, um, for continuing to make the uh, little cinema happen, even during quarantine. So it gives, obviously, everybody um, a platform and inspires people to make, what, make films to get shown. So thank you for... Uh, continuing it in such trying times. Well, I suppose it wouldn't have happened if it wasn't for Adrian uh, and Ray coming aboard to make it happen. I don't think it, I don't think it would have no, if, would, yeah. would have been able to do a live stream. But yeah, thank you very much. Um, and so lastly, to everyone who made the films, to everyone who watched, everyone who commented, everyone who got involved tonight, thank you all very, very much. Um, it's the, mo the, the most important thing about the Little Cinema is really the, the community. And so whether someone is making films uh, as an amateur or as a professional or as a bit of fun or for a bit of crack making sketches, it's very important to have that feeling of a community around you which is supportive and which will encourage you to make more. As you can see tonight from the comments, people are so supportive of each other and uh, that's what you want to see in filmmaking, that there's a, a, an environment of openness, friendliness and encouragement. So thank you all very much for getting involved, for commenting and to encourage more filmmakers to make more films. And so uh, please do make, make more films for us, whether we're uh, live streaming or whether it's in person or whatever. But thank you all very much for watching. And uh, from Matthew Blaney, it's goodbye. Goodbye. From me, Kenny Gotten, it's goodbye. And for the whole crew, it's goodbye. Thank you all very much. Thank you for watching and good night. Good night. Good night. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent.